my YouTube channel. I am trying very hard not to fango right now. <laughs> I'm incredibly happy to introduce everyone to Vicki Delaney. You may certainly call me Vicki. I was gonna say, know. I feel so informal for, like, oh. for someone you idolize. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> I was like, am I allowed to call her Vicki? I can call her Mrs. Delaney if she'd like. Your Majesty will do, but <laughs> other than that, Vicki is fine. Queen of cozies. Well, Victoria is actually my real name, so that's a good royal name. That is one! I mean, you've yeah. got the royal family there with you. That's right. Let's go Victoria and Albert. Yeah, just need an Albert. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a dog or a cat you can name Albert? Oh, Albert? that's actually, I want to do that in one of my books. <gasps> I can have a dog named Albert. If you do that, I'm going to be so excited. <laughs> and then I'm going to say, you guys remember when, and I'm going to have to archive this. Oh, okay, so I now I have to note to self, Albert. Because I already read everything you write, so now if you do write that, I'm going to be so pumped. More reasons to fangirl. Right, wait and see. I have the very official bio, which is super impressive. Vicki Delaney is one of Canada's most prolific and varied crime writers and a national bestseller in the U.S. You have written more than 30 books. That's right. Which is so impressive. Clever cozies to gothic thrillers to police procedurals to historical fiction and novellas for adult literacy. You are currently writing three cozy mystery series, which is, again, mind-boggling, impressive, bad out. <laughs> the Sherlock Holmes bookshop series, the year-round Christmas series, and Eva Gates, the Lighthouse Library series. That is a lot of cozy mystery goodness. And I actually have a new series coming up. I have a, um, a new series for Kensington uh, that will be out next year called The Tea by the Sea Mysteries. I just got chills. I got very excited there. <laughs> so is, have you already written it? Yeah, I've written, well, I've written the first one. The first one's finished. How many books in this? In this series? Oh, well, you know, one. Well, um, the contract is for two, so it just all depends on how well the books do, whether they'll want any more, so let's hope. <laughs> That'll be under my name, Vicki Delaney. It's not coming out, actually, probably till the next summer, so maybe we can have a chance to talk I was going to say, next Malice. Yeah. What is this, yeah. Malice 31? I plan to be here next year. I was so. gonna say so. Mouse thirty two. You're so sweet. I'm like, hey, she's already willing to do a second interview. I'm already I love it. myself for next year. I know. I would love <laughs> this. That makes me feel great as the interviewer. <laughs> like, yeah, do something right. <laughs> and else, I did grab you some water, so that's there for you. Thanks like very it. much. I don't use bottled water. That's my new thing. I never. I try and try hard. I shouldn't say never. I try really hard not to use bottled water. I have. I don't have my. I have a water bottle. You're very carry around. Friendly. I don't have it with me, but yeah, I'm trying hard. You're an inspiration in so many ways. I mean, the first question I have to ask you is what got you interested in cozy mysteries? Um, it's actually sort of, it is an interesting story how it happened. I um, wrote uh, police procedurals. I have an eight part police procedural series set in British Columbia called the Constable Molly Smith series. I wrote three standalones and I wrote the Klondike Gold Rush series. Um, and then one of my daughters, my youngest daughter, worked in the Turks and Caicos for a year and a half. She's a paramedic, and mm -hmm. for those of you who don't know, it's um, an island about 140 kilometers north of Cuba, so it's mm -hmm. a Caribbean island, big tourist destination. Um, and anyway, some of the stories she told were just funny, so I thought, well, this would be a funny, make a nice, interesting series. Mm -hmm. So I tended it to be very cozy, so I contacted my good friend Mary Jane Maffini, who also writes as Victoria Abbott, and asked if she think, thought that maybe her agent yeah. would like to have a look at it. So she said, sure, you know, Mary Jane read it, and what I had done, just the proposal, and, and she liked it, so she sent it to her agent. And her agent wrote back to me and said she really liked it, but she didn't think that she'd be able to place it. Aww. Okay, so I thought, well, that was the end of that. And then when she got a suggestion from, uh, from Penguin that they were looking for somebody to write a uh, new Lighthouse Library series, she remembered that she had liked my book, so she asked me if I would like to do that. So I did, and that's the series that's written under the pen name of Eva Gates. So one thing leads to another, and now I'm just writing cozies because I found that I really liked it. I'm so glad that she remembered it. Yeah, yeah. But that's kind of nice. They then in turn reached out to you. That's right. And I, I, I'm a big fan of, I believe in networking. I think that's a really good example. You know, I just asked Mary Jane, and Aunt Mary Jane was happy to pass my name on and my work on. That reminds me of like writing camaraderie almost. Yep. <laughs> and that's sort of part of the reason we're here at Malice too. Check up with old friends. You're meeting people whose names you only see online for the most part. Yeah. yeah. Again, I'm meeting you in person, which is again fangirl moment. It's like I only see her name on book covers. You have written quite a few books. Do I you have. have a favorite cozy mystery that you've written? You know, it's like to ask me which of my children is my favorite. <laughs> I think my favorite in terms of yeah, probably my favorite is the Sherlock Holmes bookshop series. Um, because there I really have a lot of fun. Yes. 
I had a lot of fun with those because the character in that is the Sherlock Holmes character. It's, mm -hmm. it's sort of Sherlock Holmes as I imagine her to be him to be a modern young woman and I'm not a giant Sherlock fan but I've read the, read the books and the stories and I've seen lots of the movies and the TV shows and I really really enjoy um, basically trying to recreate Sherlock Holmes and make him a modern young woman who's trying to have a love life and run a <laughs> store and all the while she does all of her detecting. I love that you made Sherlock into a woman because I don't think you see that to anywhere else. Yep. <laughs> too frequently. I think I, I got to the point where I was starting to associate Sherlock with Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes. <laughs> and yes. so then when I saw your book series, I'm like, this is what I needed in my life. Because <laughs> again, I'm very much like, I love books by women, for women, about right. women. And so when I saw that you yep. did a female Sherlock, that just made me so That's happy. right, and her sidekick is Jane Wilson. Yes. And JW is not a coincidence, and yes. It's like very clever. It's like everyone should read this book. Do you have a favorite character that you've written? Yeah, it's probably Gemma Doyle again from the <laughs> uh, from the Sherlock Holmes series. Um, it, you know, she's, she's not really your typical cozy character because mm -hmm. she does have that sort of an edge um, because she's Sherlock Holmes, right? So she tends to sometimes not understand that people don't follow her line of reasoning you know if they should she tends to tell people things that maybe she shouldn't she tells one in one of the books she tells um a young woman that that her fiance is really only interested in her for her money and then she wonders why the young woman slams the door on her because she didn't you know she thought she'd want to know that kind of stuff um but that complex character is also sort of to fun so i try to make her likable but at the same time she can be kind of rude you know she almost, when I was reading some of the scenes, she says the things you wish you could say. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, I'm very quiet, I'm very meek usually, and so when she says things like that, I'm going, at least she's saying the truth. Saying what she thinks is true. That's right. You know, she's not being mean. She's yeah. genuinely trying to help, but she doesn't understand that sometimes people don't want her help. They don't want them, you know, observing to other people things that she has observed. The same thing that happens in the Sherlock Holmes series, right? They think it. I mean, I have to admit, though, Sherlock can be very abrasive. She doesn't come across as that way to me. Well, I want to make, you know, because she is a close character, so, yeah. so I want to make her nice. You know, because she is nice, genuinely she nice, is. and she means well. But you know, we gotta have the little edge in there someplace, and you know she's, she's like feisty. she's the, the nemesis of the police because she's so much smarter than them. And but that's a really interesting way of phrasing it—a nemesis to the police. She does their job for them. I mean, well, she, she basically does, does yeah. their job for them. That's right. I was gonna say, I would think if anything, you know, she's making her job so much easier. <laughs> you think people still don't have to like to be showing up. <laughs> it's so funny though, because she's always, you know, multiple steps ahead of them. But she is, I mean, as far as Sherlock Holmes go, I think you might have a favorite adaptation. You are so prolific. And so I have to ask you about your writing. What does a typical writing day for you look like? Okay, I have a typical writing day and it is very typical because it's always the same every day. Um, I'm not a very organized or disciplined person, so mm -hmm. I have to be organized and disciplined and able to write so much. So I write every day when I'm at home, um, seven days a week. Uh, wow. I live in a little house in the country. Um, so seven days a week, every morning. I probably start nine o'clock-ish till maybe somewhere between 12 and 2, um, pretty much every, and that's writing time. Um, all the other stuff like the business and the promotion mm -hmm. of the business, that's all done at a different time, sort of sometime over the afternoon. Um, just so I'm going to give you an example, um, I'm going to Mozambique on Wednesday. My daughter, one of my daughters lives in Mozambique, and the reason, and I'm going for four weeks, so the reason I can oh, go wow. away for four weeks is she'll be at work Monday to Friday, uh, she won't leave the car for me. So I'll just work. So I can write in Mozambique as well as I can write in Picton, Ontario in my backyard. And then my daughter and I will do fun things on the weekends. <laughs> Whereas at home, as I said, I write seven days a week. In Mozambique, I'll try and only do five. Only five only, days. Only, only five, five days a week. Generally, when I travel, I never write anything. Mm -hmm. Because, as I said, I have a schedule that is so strict that I stick to. I know lots of people who they will spend an hour in their hotel room at a conference writing. Well, I don't do that because I don't have that solid block of time. When you say you need the solid, so do you tend to, once you sit at your computer, I'm assuming computer, mm -hmm. once you sit at your computer, you just try and stay there until... Oh, I do. And now, actually, so the way that it's set up is I have a nice office in the back of my house, mm -hmm. looks over the farmer's fields. I said I live out in the country, nice oh. big fancy computer. I get up, I walk away from there, mm -hmm. and I have a uh, just a little netbook computer that I write on <laughs> that I don't do anything else. That's the only thing I do on that is I write. It's connected to the internet because I use Dropbox as backup. Mm -hmm never set up email, I've never set up Facebook or Twitter, so I, because if I was sitting at the main computer with all that other stuff, yeah. it's just too easy to, 
you lose your train of thought and you open Facebook or you read your email and then you're off doing something else. So I have a dedicated computer that all I do on that computer is write on it. And I did hear somebody talk about it on the radio and she talked about what she called the creative space. Okay. And creative space, mentally speaking. Mm -hmm. And that was that time when you just think, when you're working in some kind of creative, even if you know you're writing a government document or something, yeah. you need to stop and you need to think. So, but she's talking about that second or that two seconds where your mind finishes one idea mm -hmm. and needs to go on to the other. And your mind needs the creative space, but it, she says in the world today, it's far too simple. You just move your finger and you open email. Yeah. So you're not entering the creative space properly. Mm -hmm. um, and I really that, took that to heart. I think that's hitting the nail on the head. I never thought of it in quite those terms before, but I, it's so easy to get swept up. At least that's how I feel. I'm, go, I'm sitting here going, I have something kind of picky lady. This is so cool. I'll also tell you something else I do that people find interesting is I stand up. Really? Like when I write, I write at a stand up. It's actually not even a stand up desk. It just so happens that the counter between the living room and or between the dining room and the kitchen is exactly the right height that I put my little notebook there and I stand there. Oh, wow. And I have one of those thick kitchen pads, you know, to yeah. stand on that I stand on. Um, because that's supposedly better for your back. That's not amazing. To sit, not to sit all day. It's not, it, sitting all day, rather, is not good for your back. Well, my next question was, what is your most interesting writing quirk? What is my in, most interesting writing quirk? I was going to say, I, I didn't have to answer the question. I, I don't know how you do that. I'm so impressed by that. It's a, oh, I like, I, now that I've done it, I've been doing it for years. And it's just the way that it is. And it's I, so much healthier. Yeah, it is actually so much healthier. And quite often in the summertime, I'll sit, I'll sit outside on the deck. And I will find after a week maybe of sitting writing that my back starts to hurt. So I'm yeah. back in the house standing. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you have more books being published, but do you have current works in progress? I always have something in progress. <laughs> um, I kind of figured. So the new... Um, the next Sherlock Holmes book is not coming out until next January, but it is coming out in January and it's called, actually it doesn't have a name, I can't tell you what it is. Uh, so anyway, so that's that. The next um, Eva Gates Lighthouse Library series is Red and Buried, which will be out in October. But the next book will be the fourth in the year round Christmas series and it's called um, Silent Night, Deadly Night. You forgot the title of your own book? I, oh, I did the Malice Go Round thing this morning. Oh, you did the off, the one where you go to every single yeah, table? Yeah, that's right. And by the end of that, you'll oh little bit of a sort of like that. So Silent Night, Deadly Night comes out at the end of uh, August. As you can tell, because it's a year round Christmas mystery, you can sort of tell by the cover, it's set at Thanksgiving. I am. You did the author go around? Yeah. I don't even know how you're functioning right now. It's, it's pretty intense. I like it. I've done it for years, but I, I really I really enjoy it. I find it it's really energizing. And it's tiring when it is. My throat clo you know, sort of closed up a couple times. <laughs> you know, try saying Hermione Granger's beaded handbag 21 times, because that's part of my spiel about the Lighthouse Library series, it is it's set in a at a lighthouse, yeah. which is nowhere near big enough for libraries, so it's like, you know, it's like Hermione Granger's beaded handbag. I mean, I, I'm a Harry Potter girl, so I oh, appreciate so you, that you get the reference so much. Yeah. Oh yeah, I have multiple <laughs> copies of the Harry Potter books. Okay. Oh yeah. Good to know. I'm a Ravenclaw, by the way. Okay. What are you? I don't know. <gasps> I've never actually tried. You've never taken the test? No, I have. I have read all the books actually, all, and I've seen probably seen all the movies. Oh, like fine, but I've never taken the test. No. You need to go on power more and do that. Okay, I'll remember to do that. <laughs> I'll let you know what I find. Do you know if you'd be a Ravenclaw, Slytherin, Hufflepuff? I would hope I wouldn't be a Slytherin. I mean, my best friend's a Slytherin, so I mean, there's nothing wrong with Slytherin. No, I don't suppose. Well, so this might actually help answer the question. Are you a plotter or a pantser? Um, I am a plotter. When I started my <laughs> So you're not a Gryffindor, probably. When I started my writing career, I was more of a pantser, um, but then when I got uh, contracts from Penguin mm -hmm. and such publishers, they really want an outline, um, mm -hmm. before, you know, before they, which is a good idea. I don't know if the book's going to work or not. Um, so once I started writing outlines, I found that I worked a lot better for that. So I, I, it's not a terribly detailed outline. It might be five pages, five single, you know, single space typewritten pages, which isn't compared to a book it's not a lot um, but it helps to keep me focused and yeah. um, you know it sort of gets you over that sort of what's gonna happen next hump mm -hmm. um, I don't believe that you necessarily have to stick completely to um, to the outline but it helps yeah. a lot when they when you, what am I gonna do now oh, I'll go back to the outline and see what I decided to do get the hardest part over with at the beginning it worked well so do you go typically for like the word count to have a goal? It's more by time in, okay. a, um, in my working day. It's more by time. Um, 
by time maybe, of course, you know, sometimes I have to do things, but generally speaking about one o'clock or maybe somewhere between one and two, I start thinking it's been enough. It's definitely a different process than other jobs. You're gonna be drained creatively. Mm -hmm. Well, and then there's all the, the promotional stuff and the marketing and the business end of it, and there's a business end as well. You know, <laughs> counting my money. Uh, <laughs> Um, I usually hope so. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, you know, the, the, the online yeah. stuff. Then that's all going to be done too. Because I'm pretty sure I'm following you on every social media platform. I'm pretty sure I am. Okay, I'm there. I'm <laughs> Vicky Delaney and Eva Gates is the name of my Facebook page. VickyDelaney.com is the name of my web page. Which everyone should visit. And so I do want to ask if you had any advice for aspiring kind of mystery writers. Yeah, actually I do. Um, my, best, my best piece of advice has always been to read. Uh, like Stephen King in On Writing says, if you want to be a writer, you have to do two things. You have to write and you have to read. Um, and I really do believe you have to read. And you have to read a lot. And not necessarily just in the genre or the subgenre that you're trying to write in. You need to know what's out there. And good writing, I believe, should inspire you. Um, rather than some people think, well, you know, doesn't that influence you? Well, I want to be influenced by, you know, a book that I really, really like. And then my other piece of advice really is the networking. Get to know people. Um, if there's a Sisters in Crime um, chapter in your area, for example, um, you know, join, get to know people, come to conferences. You know, conferences cost time, cost money, they cost time. If you can, come. Um, get to know authors and readers online. Uh, network is like I gave the example of Mary Jane McKinney. Yeah. Um, you know, I believe networking is really important. So. When you mentioned inspiration, I've been reading other things. I'm just curious, what inspired you to write an all-year Christmas book? That was actually, that was my agent's <laughs> idea. She, the only thing that idea she said was a Christmas themed store. Um, so I sort of sat down with that and then I thought of the Christmas team themed town would be more fun. So I created the entire town as Chris Rudolph, New York, where they celebrate Christmas mm -hmm. all year round. And they want to be, you know, their biggest ambition in life is to be known as America's Christmas town. Um, so the whole Christmas sort of And I'm thing. rooting for them. That's right. Yeah. So put in, you know, in the, when, when there's a full put in for them. Um, you know, so then, and, and that gave it, you know, even more of a kind of a funny, silly kind of a dimension. But, uh, you know, the shops are on Jingle Bell Line, the yeah. Bell Lane, and the main character's father, is he Santa Claus? Might be. You're like another know. mystery going on That's in the series. Right. Yeah. I feel as if it's always relevant because Hallmark does their Christmas in July now and that was one of the things when I saw your book pop up in yeah. the Goodreads. Well like, you can <laughs> see the cover of this one, right? It's obviously <laughs> there at the lake and the dog's got his um, uh, life jacket on. So it's Christmas in July in this book. Santa comes to town for his annual vacation at the lake. Christmas in July. July's coming up. That's right. So I have some very quick, fun, either or questions okay. for you. Okay. Mrs. White or Miss Scarlet? Oh, uh, Mrs. White. Mrs. Peacock or Professor Plum? Mrs. Peacock. Dr. Black or Colonel Mustard? Oh, Colonel Mustard. This one's for you, Sherlock or Watson? Oh, it's Sherlock all the way. <laughs> Sherlock all the way. Oh, poor Watson. Yep. Nancy Drew or Hardy Boys? I think I was more of a Nancy girl, a Nancy Drew person when I was a girl, although I did read the Hardy Boys as well, so I would say Nancy. I like where you're like, I'm a Nancy girl. Yeah. But it's true. I'm a Nancy, I would have said Nancy. My writing related either or. I had the mystery ones and I got the red ones. Tea or coffee? Coffee. I probably drink six cups of coffee a day while I'm writing. I drink coffee, you know, maybe that's not a habit, boys and girls, that you should emulate, but uh, <laughs> coffee all the way. With, uh, now with half and half and cream of sugar? Uh, just... No, with 1% milk. Okay, so at least you're not as, I mean, I'm a half and half person, oh, yeah. so no. if I was doing six with that, that, I mean, I go for the Trent of Berry Biscuit, so I can't coffee okay. anyway. <laughs> Complete quiet or music all around? Um, uh, music, but very low. I usually listen to Mozart. Even even classical music that I'm not really familiar with, I'll stop to listen to. So music to me has to be totally in the background. And Mozart kind of is that, that you don't, uh, for me anyway, it just plays in the background. Morning or night? Morning. Candlelight or lamplight? Oh, lamplight. <laughs> my candle. <laughs> I'm very Shakespeare, you get the image of the writer hovering with Strained eyes. Yeah, no. Google or Bing or Yahoo? Oh, uh, Google. <laughs> Google is my search engine of choice. I think that's a search that, I mean, that seems to be the writer's go-to. That's kind of the default with Windows yeah. too, so, yeah. It works. Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? Starbucks. Pajamas or sweatpants? Pajamas. City or small town? Small town. I live actually don't even live in a small town. I live outside a small. T I live outside a uh, town population four thousand. Oh wow! 
That is that is a very small town. Cake or pie? Probably cake. Pancakes or waffles? Neither. 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 You won't eat waffles or pancakes? I would say won't. I'm not that fond of them, so it's not worth the calories. So then, cake or pie? Oh well, you see, cake because I will cheat and I will <laughs> have cake. If I, you know what, if I had my choice, cake for sure. And then I'm pretty sure I know the answer to this one: Christmas or Halloween? Oh yeah, I'm a Christmas person. I was gonna say, based yep. on the fact you have an all-year-round Christmas book series, yep, I'm thinking that's Christmas. Right. Yep. All year-round Halloween might get a little bit tedious. I mean, How many costumes do you come up with? Although, granted, I'd probably just choose a single individual type of character. Your Harry Potter. Bit. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. I actually just bought the complete Luna Lovegood costume. Oh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. The thing is, though, I already had most of the pieces. I already had the Ravenclaw sweater. I already had the Ravenclaw headband. Have you, ever, have you been to London to platform no, the course? No, I want that I is have, my life goal. I have been. The first time I was there was maybe five years ago, and we were like walking in King's Cross Station, and we're walking, and there's a, you know, they have a big sign, platform nine and three quarters. Uh, and so we took pictures of me standing in front of platform 93 quarters. This, I was there last year again, and it's now like there's a lot, there's a quarter, uh, like a, you know, like a velvet rope around it. People <laughs> line up. There's an official photographer there. Oh, wow. Yeah, so you have to line up now to have your photo taken. I still want to go. Oh, definitely want to I go. really want to go. I also want to go to Harry Potter World. <laughs> The Disney excursion mm -hmm. that they have, that they have created. I also wanted to try the butter beer. Oh, you remember it's like the butter beer? Butter is it actually buttery? It's, I mean, I I was looking up recipes. I don't really cook, but I was looking up recipes for butter beer. Apparently, once Harry Potter is involved, I can do anything. Um, <laughs> so I was looking up recipes, and there was everything from having root beer mixed in with butter, mixed in with like all these different things. But that's the official one I'm gonna go with. Okay. Okay. Well, let me know how it works. Because <laughs> there's a question you didn't ask. I'll ask you: wine or beer? I mean, I actually don't drink alcohol. Oh, okay. Don't ask me. Ask me. Uh, wine or beer? Wine. Wine. <laughs> well, red or white. White. Uh, Chardonnay or what is it? Sauvignon Blanc is my favorite. Oh. Yeah. See, I might not drink it, but I know things. Of which I had too much last night. <laughs> Did you go to the murder mystery? No, because I was to the bar drinking. <laughs> It's a nice setup downstairs it's nice, here. It's a very nice hotel. It's beautiful. Yeah. I didn't realize how large it was though. The conference area is gigantic. When I went to register on Thursday, there was two other things going on. I almost registered for this heart thing or yeah. something. I was registering, they were doing like stroke prevention area and I was with the doctors for a minute before I realized these are not my mystery people. <laughs> no, no. I saw a sign up, there's a high school prom here tonight. <laughs> so that's gonna be for some, you know some fun in the corridors, I'm sure. I mean, I'm curious though about the prom dresses and outfits and all that. That's always the fascinating part to me. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things that I was gonna ask: stage a murder. So I have all the little trinkets over oh. there because YouTube we have to do a thumbnail image. So I figured we might as well pose poison. We have the big teacups. We have the Sherlock Holmes hats and the magnifying glasses. You can murder me, you can make me murder you. Excuse me, I just have to have a little look here. So, oh, well, you know what, here we have a coffee cup. I will be Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> you are drunk with poison coffee. <laughs> no, you're lying back okay. in your chair. Am I dead? Am I, am yes, I, yes, I'm you're lying, dead. I'm dead. You're dead. I'm kind of cut my head off there. And I am looking for clues. <laughs> I have solved the crime. <laughs> It was, <laughs> it was not poisoned coffee, it was badly prepared coffee. That's its own type of poison. Yes, yeah, so yeah, <laughs> it was an accidental death. <laughs> I, I would be very, I, would, I, I probably would have a little minor thing if the coffee was bad. <laughs> okay. I know, but I kind of thought it was cute. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah, you. Like poison the coffee. Actually, I'm trying to think about the book I'm writing right now. It is poison tea. Is it really? Yeah, it actually, it's in the, tea, uh, the, uh, the second tea by the sea mystery. Uh, somebody, the guy does it, they, um, he brings his own tea because he's, you know, not eating, he's, he's not having caffeine, so he brings his own tea and asks the waitress to prepare the, you know, with hot water and, and someone has put something else in it. Your job is to think of murder. I know, <laughs> it's them? kind of a twisted. But they're fun murders though, because they're cozy. We get away with a lot. And, uh, you know, when there's no, there's no 
international gunplay or terrorists or, you know, foreign spies or anything like that. So it's all just up close and personal murders. It's in the Christmas town. Was there anything else you wanted to add for anyone watching? I don't think so. I'd like to thank you very, very oh, much for this interview. It was such fun. Really You're so fun. sweet. Thank you so oh, much for taking the time I to talk like to me. I like staging the little murder. That was pretty cool. <laughs> I wanted to do something a little bit fun and different. I think that is. No, I thank that you. So that's great. I so was trying really you. hard, so thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And thank you to everyone Thanks watching. Have a nice one.